What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is episode number 11 and today we have Transfer Deadline Day, one of the most exciting days of the season for you guys because you get to see me buy loads and loads and loads of different players. But in this series, that's not going to be the case. It usually is, but in this series, it won't be the case, at least for not for the first season or two or three or four or X, I don't know. But uh, the reason being is because you would have seen my budget there. We have no real money. And one of the problems at this club as well is not just the fact we've got limited finances. It's also the fact that our reputation is unbelievably poor. And why? Well, we're the club in uh, Liga Adelante and we're also the lowest ranked team in Spain in terms of overall star rating. So, you know, not too many players are going to want to come to us. Okay, yes, in terms of form in the league, we're doing fantastically well, but the players don't really recognise that on this game. So it does mean that the players we want to sign on, uh, on deadline day are going to be players who aren't really the most reputable I guess and uh, quality I guess but uh, still we do go ahead and try and sign some free contract players because as the title says it's the only transfers we can do really that's the only thing we can do here at Racing Santander as I looked at the money you guys have seen me be going in for uh, Grimaldo over the past couple of episodes but he just Barcelona B will not let the guy go so we won't be able to afford him and you know there was another player I was looking at Moy Gomez but we can't afford him either so you know we sold our goalkeeper one of our highest rated players in the team the only player we really had that could get us any kind of money if we sold him and even you know the 1.5 million pound we got for him was an absolutely fantastic deal that's 900 grand more than he was valued at but it still doesn't give us enough money to sign any good players good up and coming players really so it's frustrating, you know, th these are the only transfers we can do, but it is worth remembering that, you know, at the end of the day, we, we knew this when we came here, and it's, you know, it's just how it is. It's going to be one of those challenges we'll have to overcome it, but still, uh, on pre-contracts, we signed Albin Toza, Christian Fernandez, Pedro Bigas, and also Keiko, or Kiko as well, so four players arriving on pre-contracts next year. Now, I know that these players aren't going to be the type of players who have, like, 80-plus potential, or probably even 75-plus potential, or maybe for some of them, even 70 potential you know but these are the type of players we need to sign because next year we need to thicken our squad with players who are at least in the 60s and all of these players are at this club you know there are some times where we have to rely on playing 50 rated players you know in the, the mid high 50s some in the low 60s as well but the reason being is because the stamina problems with this team I've mentioned this before one of the problems with playing with really low rated players is that usually physically they're not the best technically they could be okay but physically they're not the best and with this team that does ring true with the players their stamina is so poor I mean you know Munir for example I know he's on loan but 38 stamina he can barely play every once to uh, once every two weeks you know so it means that we need to thicken the squad up with some relatively decent players for this division at least and uh, that's why I signed those four players I know they're not that great but you know I feel like we had to do it next year because we are going to be losing a lot of players for next season too because we've got like 12 players on loan but uh, still it was interesting but uh, for the first time in FIFA 15 I had a manager join job offer come to me and it was Tenerife who wanted to take us but of course we said no because Tenerife may have a little bit more money than Racing Santander but <laughs> I've probably got more money than Racing Santander myself but at the end of the day you know Tenerife are sitting in what 19th place in Liga Adelante you'll see the table in a minute so you know leaving this Racing Santander side which may not be great let's be honest to go to Tenerife you know we're, we're in like what we third place second place right now we're, we're really high up the table whereas Tenerife are right down the bottom you know why would I abandon the, the work we've done in this first half of the season to go to a club who like I said may have a bit more money but are in really poor form it just makes no sense really I mean if it was a club that was in like fifth or sixth uh, you know maybe someone like Mallorca for example who would definitely have a bit more money then maybe I'll consider it but at the end of the day like there's no way I'm abandoning this project to go to a team that are currently struggling in our same division so yeah we, we said no and uh, it was interesting though the first time we got a job off from another club without us having to inquire in FIFA 15 and I don't even remember getting one in FIFA 14 either well, I think City came in for us didn't they when we were managing Millwall anyway we said no and that's all we need to know but uh, here's the league table as well 25 games in we are in third place with 53 points as you can see we are 16 points ahead of 7th placed CD Lugo now the reason that's important is because that is the team that are you know just outside the playoffs the, uh, the one position outside the playoffs so to be 16 points clear of the last team outside the play sorry the first team outside the playoffs 
it does make us feel very good because, as you'll see us simulate this game here against uh, Leganes, because I thought we'd win it with ease, to be honest. They were in mid-table when we were at home, and we did win it by two goals to one after they missed a penalty. Um, you know, I, I definitely feel as though we should be at least getting to the playoffs now. And I know that sounds a bit too premature. We've still quite a few games to go. And this team isn't the best. We could have a meltdown. You never know. But I, I really feel that's a massive gap, 16 points. And I think we should be okay now. And after winning that game, I think personally speaking, we should be looking to uh, get a top two finish, not a let alone just uh, consolidate a place in the playoffs. But uh, still, we also had a uh, useful monthly report, the first one of the series. Now, of course, do remember that our scout is only one star experience and judgment. So... He's not going to pick us up very good players, and that's why we just continue to scout on the three you picked up, and we'll look at them next month and see what they uh, they look like. So, yeah, don't expect us to be getting the next Xavi or any Esther for our academy with this scout, because quite frankly, we're not going to be able to do that at all, really, are we? So, you know, we might get lucky and get someone who has like uh, 80 potential or something, but that's the best we could really hope for. But uh, still, we took on Al uh for the second game of today's episode, but of course, the first played game. And uh, again, we're at home, so I was tempted to simulate this one as well but even though I am going to try and simulate a game here and there, I've already simulated one before this episode, even though I will try and simulate a game here and there just to speed this uh, season and uh, this series up at the beginning I don't want to do like two or more per episode. I don't want to do one at the most. So uh, there you go. We still we took him on. And I did expect to win. The first chance fell directly from kickoff as we went for with Buena Casa there. Rounded every single player and then the goalkeeper made the save to annoy the hell out of me. So that would have been a lovely goal. But it was still scoreless. But in the 17th minute, the former Juventus, uh, sorry, the uh, man on loan from Juventus is on the ball for us again here. He uh, gets past his man with a double step over, stops the ball, holds it up, gives it to Sandro, and Sandro makes it 1 0. So Sandro getting the goal. And uh, to be honest, Buena Casa and Sandro have been a really good partnership this year. You know, whenever one scored, the other one has usually got the assist. They work really well up top together, and uh, they are both on loan, of course. Uh, Buena Casa on loan from Juventus, Sandro from Real Madrid. So those two, as a partnership, work very nicely together. They've got about 25 goals between them as well this season. So very good strike partnership we have, and we go 1-0 up here. And in the 26th minute, we had a free kick. Sandro is our best free kick taker with 56 accuracy. And he almost scores a fantastic goal as well. The goalkeeper makes a brilliant save, though, and keeps it at 1-0. And in the 45th minute, Alcacorn had their first chance of the game. Sands goes down the right-hand side, crosses the ball in. Rodriguez wins the header, and it's tipped over the bar by our goalkeeper, Fernandez. And it is still 1-0. And it was also how the game finished as well, a 1-0 victory. It was a really, really poor game in the second half. And as I've mentioned many, many times now, we expect that, you know, the games aren't going to be full of action and full of excitement and loads of five-star skillers just tearing up the pitch. It's going to be really slow-paced and quite subpar, but even so, as I mentioned before, the, the points are the most important thing, and we've got all three there, and it gives us good momentum coming into this game against Osasuna. And this is a relatively big game, because Osasuna are sitting in sixth place, and of course, with us in second place, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, you know, the, 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 biggest, point, uh, the biggest thing we want to do is make sure we get a gap between where we are in a, in a table compared to the teams just outside or just inside the playoffs. We want a really big gap there as we look to try and hold on to promotion places, not just playoff places. So Osasuna are in sixth place. We are 19 points ahead of them with, I think, 15 games to go in the season. So, you know, a huge, huge gap. But, you know, we can't afford to, basically, we can't afford to take the foot off the gas right now. You know, we need to keep, we need to keep on pressing. We need to keep on winning because we don't want to drop back into, you know, playoffs sort of around the, uh, the midsection in the playoffs, miles, uh, sorry, miles, uh, loads and loads of points away from second and third, uh, first place. We want to keep on staying in where we are right now and not dropping up points against these uh, sides who aren't bad at all. And we do take them on away from home and the first chance would fall to us in the fifth minute as Munir slides the ball through towards Buena Casa here. Really good chance but the man on loan from Juventus is denied by the goalkeeper and it's still a nil nil. And Buena Casa, he got off to a really good start this season but he's been a little bit average over the past few months but it's still nil nil. In the 50th minute we had a good chance here though as Munir Ronaldo chops one and uh, heel to heel flicks around another and then smashes the ball into the far corner. Very nice goal by Munir there. Okay, a couple of you know easy skill moves, Ronaldo chop and heel to heel flick, but still very nice to get himself from down the left hand side into the centre and a really, really good finish as well. So it's a shame this guy only has 38 stamina because I'd love to play him on a more regular basis, but still 1 0 to Racing Santander. In the 65th minute though, Osasuna have a great chance to equalise and as you can see here, we fail to deal with a ball into the box as it comes through with. Uh, Mesa. He just plays the ball into the centre and Cece has the simplest of finishes to make it 1-1. 
And that was really poor defending. I think it was Quinty on the left back position who was sleeping. Just let CC get ahead of him. And he just put the ball past Fernandez and made it Osasuna 1. Racing Santander 1. You'll see it here. The man who's marking him, he just seems to sleep and just have a bit of a lapse of concentration there. And it's a really simple finish for the number 11. So 1-1 one, one and Osasuna are back on level terms. But a great chance for us just a few minutes later to put ourselves back in the front. Uh, sorry, back in the front, back in the lead. Uh, Miguel is coming forward, but his shot went wide at the post. And that really should have been 2 -1. One, but in the 90th minute here in stoppage time, Miguel has wins the ball back and drills in a cross, across the face of goal. No one's there. And as it comes to Buena Casa, I thought the chance was gone. But as he rolls it in towards Javi Soria, he fake shots around the last man and scores a 90th minute winner to make it Osasuna 1, Racing Santander 2. And we are going to leave here with a huge, huge three points. The travelling fans will be very happy. And at first, I didn't understand how the goalkeeper didn't save it because it's quite a poor shot. But you'll see there, it does take a deflection off the defender. And that's why he can't get any gloves on it so it's uh, you know a very nice goal at least because uh, we kept the chance alive and the fake shot to get around the defender that was marking him was very nice indeed but even so the deflection definitely helped it on its way I think the goalkeeper would have saved it otherwise and we do indeed claim the three points thanks to that late goal he came off the bench Javi Soria couldn't find the animation but you may have seen in the top left the, uh, the little sort of indication to show he came on and we did indeed win the game by two goals to one so very pleased with the win uh, very glad to get the win it was a tough fought game and after that we saw the ball came to us and said on behalf of the board I want to acknowledge all the work and the dedication we've seen you bring to the club and you've had a lot of pressure and speculation but you're the right man for the job you get these emails every now and then but this one actually feels good you know usually when I get those emails I'm like yeah yeah whatever I know I'm a good manager I know that everything's going well but this one felt really good you know because this is a real challenge here you know this is a really really big challenge and we have had a bit of speculation that we might be getting the sack we have had a couple of times the board coming to us and saying you need to change things up in the next match we were disappointed to see you lose that game and it's always made me feel a little bit nervous you know because I don't really feel like my job's going to be very secure here at Racing Santander with a very limited budget and you know a very poor side let's be honest so it actually felt good to get a vote of confidence for once and that was a really good email to see there but uh, still for the third and final game of today's episode and the fourth in total but a third played game here we travel away from home to take on Iago Stera. how's that for a pronunciation and uh, we take him on away from home here fancied our chance of win it, winning it as we're on a really good uh, win streak at the moment and they are sitting towards the lower end of the table. Buena Casa had our first chance but his shot from outside the area hit the post and in the 50th minute we would see some uh, pretty sad news because Concha ends up getting himself an injury and that is a real real shame because this guy is only 18 years old and he's actually one of the players here at Racing Santander that isn't on loan yet he is pretty decent to start overall at 64. I'm sure his potential isn't the best but even so he's, he's someone who I actually wanted to develop because he is, you know, he, he comes from the club. You know, he is a Racing Santander player. He's not on loan. So it's a shame to see him get injured and unfortunately he would complete no more part in this match. But in the 71st minute here, we come forward with uh, Jose Pozo on loan from City down the left-hand side. He picks out Quinty, who goes on, uh, takes on his man George. He beats him for pace, crosses the ball in and Tunkara heads it in and makes it 1-0 to Racing Santander. A fantastic finish by Tunkara. He comes off the bench a lot but doesn't score too many goals. Of course, the Athletic and Madrid goals were wonderful but hasn't really done much since then but he does get us a very very important goal there nice cross by Quinty very good header there and a man on loan from Lazio makes it 1-0 to Racing Santander so it looks like we're going to win this game with a late winner but in the 85th minute Madran finds our Tyler's who skips around Lopez and shoots but a shot is well saved by the goalkeeper and it's still 1-0 but it was how the game would finish so four wins from four of course three play games and three wins from those as well very very good run of form and uh, yeah things looking very very good here at Racing Santander we are beginning to improve ever so slightly but the progression is the most important thing and we are showing it right now so as always guys a big thank you for watching the video I really hope you have enjoyed it if you have enjoyed the episode please leave a like and I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country very soon